I'm Anuradha Mathur. I teach physics at Modern School Vasant Vihar in New Delhi. In the last unit, you studied about work energy theorem. You studied how to calculate this and what it really meant. Work done by any force gets converted into changing mechanical energy for that system. We did examples, we saw a demo in that where this conversion was being shown. Now in this unit, we are going to again take a work energy theorem and just do two simple examples which are very relevant to day to day life and which need certain attention from all of us to regard physics as something that allows us to have fun and makes it far more interesting and useful in daily life. So we are going to use work energy theorem in order to describe what happens when a body moves in a vertical circle. What is really meant by a vertical circle? Let's understand that. You could be moving in a horizontal plane or you could be moving in a vertical plane. So, what's the difference? What's so special about it? Now, we are going to see what are the forces that are necessary for a body which is to move in a circle from your knowledge of circular motion. And if an object was to move around this circular track and move with a certain speed v, it was very, very necessary to have a certain force to be working in this direction. What was the value of that force from our lessons in circular motion? This force was called centripetal force and its value was equal to m v square upon r. r was the value of the radius of the circle, v the speed, m the mass of the object. So, obviously, if the speed was to change, then the centripetal force would become more. If the radius was to change, become larger, then for keeping this body to be moving in this circle, we required a larger value of speed. Now, this situation changes very much when you are trying to move a body in a vertical circle. What would change for it? You can see a demo of a bucket or a container filled with water and if you take a string attached to it and swirl it in a vertical circle, you can have a speed for it such that the water does not fall. If you move with a lower speed, the water would fall. So, we need to see what should be the minimum speed with which you should be moving at the lowermost point such that it goes and negotiates the full vertical circle. So, what we are talking about is if this is a horizontal circle, our vertical circle would look something like this. So, we are talking about an object moving in this vertical circle like this and we are talking about is there a special speed required by it to go along like this and we are going to use work energy theorem to solve this for us. Now, here is our circle and let us consider a stone or a water uh, container which is somewhere over here tied to this string of length L and we give it a certain horizontal speed here at this location A and say we call it V A and this moves right up till this point and continues to do so. So, at this point if we call this location C, then the speed at C should be causing it to move in this direction. With respect to this point A, C is higher in a vertical system. From here this would be A and this would be C. So, this is higher with respect to that and what is the height above it? 
equal to 2 L. Uh, supposing the mass of the object is m here. So, what are the forces acting at this point? That would be m g the weight and the centripetal force which we have just discussed. So, it will be m v a the speed at this point upon l the length of the string. Now, this should be equal to the tension in the string at this point. For it to go right up till here, what will be the forces acting on it? There would be m g that is the weight of the system and this should be equal to m v c square upon l because the basic condition we are saying is for it to negotiate this curve. That means, string should just slacken that means, the tension should just turn 0. So, at this location uh, you are talking about T c becoming just 0. So, this is what is happening at A and this is what is happening at C. In addition to this, the energy at this point can also be explained because that would be potential energy with respect to the position A. That means, from this point to here, the potential energy at C can be given as equal to m g and h here would be 2 L. So, at this point, the object has kinetic energy which is equal to half m c square plus the potential energy at this point. The total energy of the system remains half m v a square which it had at this point the lowest point. So, at the lowest point we are assuming the potential energy to be equal to 0 and at the highest point the potential energy given by this value m g 2 l. Now, how does this give us anything about what speed we should be moving at? because we can now use work energy theorem and equate the change in energy from here to this point to the value of work done. What will be the work done in moving it from there equal to the potential energy which is m g into 2 L. Let us see how. Let us write the value of total energy at C. What would this value be equal to kinetic energy plus the potential energy time which would be half m v c square plus m g into 2 l. You do realize that v c is going to be different from v a because v a at that point the energy was only kinetic and was in the form of half m v a square. Here we have this additional value of energy in terms of potential energy. So, this is its value and this could be from the other equation that we wrote earlier of uh, talking about the total energy, we could equate that half m v a square to be half m v c square plus m g l. This will be your value. So, you can then write the value for energy in terms of the work done. Let us see how. Consider the circle and the tension in the string at A and at C. If the string has to slacken here, the tension C should become 0, which means this equation which gives us the centripetal force is equal to m g and the total value of tension at A is given by m g plus m v A square upon L. So, one equation, two equation and then in terms of how much is the potential energy, how much is the total energy in this system? The total energy at the base is equal to this, this is the total kinetic energy and the potential energy on top is equal to m g into 2 L. So, using these equations, we can get the value for our energy at C to be equal to 5 by 2 m g l. Equating it to equation 3, we get the value for v a to be equal to root of 5 g l. Now, this is the important value. So, depending upon the string that we take, this velocity at this point, the speed at point a should be at least 5 g l 
for it to negotiate this circle, otherwise it will not move in a vertical circle. The reason for that you can understand logically is that all the kinetic energy converts into potential energy at this highest point and because of that you are going to have a situation where if you need the speed to be uh, some value so that it moves in this circle then you will have to have a speed v a slightly greater than 5 g l. You must have heard of many air accidents when they are doing air shows. The aircraft is supposed to fly in a vertical circle. Now, if, if the aircraft does not have speed greater than this, it is not going to go to this point. It will drop somewhere over here and that causes an accident. So, the pilot requires to calculate according to the radius that he is choosing to go in a vertical circle to have a speed greater than 5 g l. The moment he has that speed, there would be no problem in his going from uh, the lowest point to the highest point without any problem. We are going to take up one more example, which is not only very interesting, but also tells us something about what we never ever think of. For example, here is a big lake and water goes up as water vapor and forms these beautiful clouds that we see. And then of course, there is rain and we never even think that there would be some energy involved in formation of the cloud. So, what we are going to do now is use our work energy theorem to find out how much energy ta is taken up by the water to go right up and form a cloud and come down. Okay. So, let us see how do we do that. Supposing we imagine this uh, cloud to be at a height of 500 meters, that is about half a kilometer and say there is rainfall and it covers a certain area over here and this area can be taken as 10 raise power of 6 uh, meters square. And say uh, on a particular day when it has rained, the water collects up to a height of say some 2 centimeters. Not to scale, but just to make you and get you an idea that okay, the water will fill up to 2 centimeters. How do we calculate this now? All we have to do is to find out what is the work done in going up. So, let us calculate the mass of water that has come down. How much would be the mass of water? The volume of water will be uh, given by uh, 10 raise to the power of 6 multiplied by 2 and if you multiplied that by density of water which is 10 raise to the power of 3 grams per meter cube or 1 kilogram per meter cube. So, this is the value for the mass and acceleration due to gravity you can take as 10. So, your uh, the work done in moving this mass to this height can be calculated and how much would that be? Mass into acceleration due to gravity into the height that you raise it to. So, in our case it is 500. So, let us substitute that 10 raise power of 6 into 2 into 10 raise power of 3 into 5 into. So, all together how many 6 plus 3 9 plus 2 11. So, you are going to have 10 raise power of 11 joules of work that is huge amount of energy. Where do you think that comes from? All the heat from the sun, heat from the ground vaporizes the water and they get this additional energy to go and make the clouds and that comes down as rain, but not without doing work. So, work energy theorem has shown us a way to find out how much of energy is there in moving the water droplets from the base of the lake or from the from the lake to a height of 500 meters and come down as rain. You can find many examples like this and use them to your advantage and do fun things and tricky things to find out how much of work is being done from the way the energy changes. So, amount of energy change equals to the work done. So, work energy theorem 
is very, very useful in physics and especially in mechanics.